Hello, and welcome to Code in 5 Minutes with Zim. I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this Code in 5 Minutes, we're going to bring in some thumbnails and show some pictures. So let's go to the Zim site now at zimjazz.com. We'll press on the code, hit copy. Copies the template, and we'll put the template into a text editor such as Adam. Remove the chaining stuff or the circle stuff that we had in there, and we're left with put your code here and a stage.update. Now, we are also going to bring in some assets. Uh, so let's see what those assets look like. Here they are. So we've got a bunch of thumbnails. They have the word thumb on the end, and then pictures without the word thumb are the actual pictures. And we want to basically uh, display the thumbnails when we click on them, open up a picture. We're gonna see if we can code that in five minutes. Uh, one of the things we'll want to do is we'll bring in those assets, but uh, luckily Zim, just down here in the same uh, code, Zim code area, we've got a tool that lets, uh, helps us out with that. It's called Asset List right here. So under Tools, we'll click Asset List, and if we browse, we can browse to the folder. You select all of the things in the folder and hit Open. And what that does is it makes the code for us to be able to to uh, bring in those assets. So uh, we'll cheat a little bit and we'll plop that code right in here. Uh, the path is called pictures because that's where all these pictures are. If we look here, here they are pictures. Our, our file is down here and then there's a pictures directory, a relative pictures directory. And look at what that tool does. It just puts in all those file names for us so that we don't have to uh, we don't have to type them. So I'm not going to count that as part of the code in five minutes because there was a tool that did that for us. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> because we gave you the tool, <laughs> we don't have to count it in the five minutes. Uh, by the way, that, that puts these variables here, but we do still have to bring those variables in here. So assets and path. Uh, we might also want to make a new waiter here. So the new waiter will give us three little dots that go dit 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 while those assets are loading. Now it might be uh, more, or it would be optimal if we only load the asset, or sorry, only load the thumbnails in via this method so that we show the thumbnails to start. And then once the thumbnails are there, then we can use frame.load assets to load the other asset, uh, other assets in the big pictures. Uh, especially if those pictures, if there's many and they're, they're large, you don't want to have to wait, have the person wait for all those when they might not even see them all. So uh, you could load them in behind or even as, as things are, as you select a thumbnail, you could then load as needed like that if, uh, if you wanted to. Okay, well that's enough of that. Let's get to, uh, get to our coding in five minutes. Might be a tight one. Um, we're going to, uh, we may not uh, get it to look all that good, but perhaps we can just spend an extra moment or two making it look a bit better after. But uh, let's get it so we can tile those icons in there and uh, thumbnails in there. And when we press on it, we pop up the picture in a pane. That's uh, generally the idea. So why don't we start that timer now? Woohoo! And we're off. Okay, so we're going to store in a, a variable const, well, const equals thumbs. And, um, oh, <laughs> great start. That's a great start. E equals an array. Can we do it? There's 15 seconds to make an array. All right, and then we will loop through all of the assets. Uh, these are the, and each time we'll be given an asset and we'll send that into an arrow function like that. And then we want to find out if this is a thumbnail. So if asset dot substra. So substring, oh no, index of, we want to use it. index of uh, thumb. So if there is the word thumb, if that's greater than zero, then it is a thumbnail. And at that point, we want to say thumbs dot push. So we'll add to the array. We may as well make the actual asset, frame dot asset, um, asset, I guess, uh, yeah. I suppose that looks good. So we actually make the thumbnail asset, put it in that array. And now we want to tile. So um, const tile is equal to a new tile. And we'll tile those, a series of those assets, series of 
thumbs. So we pass the array into the series. We're going to have three columns and two rows. And we will put in a spacing of 20 and 20. Get in there. We'll dot center that on the stage and also dot tap it. When we tap it, we'll collect the event object and pass that into this function like so. Uh, but before we do anything with tapping, let's see how we're doing. Uh, open in browser. Okay, so there's the thumbnails tiled on the stage. And now let's make our pane so that we know what we're talking about. Const pane is equal to a new pane. When we start dealing with the panes, we don't need to add it, but we could give it um, we could give it uh, the size, I suppose. So that would be uh, probably like stage width. We, we might want to make this look better. Uh, we'll go minus um, 50 for now, and then some uh, height, uh, 650, whatever. I, I think these things are uh, 550 or something. So there's our pain. We're not going to see it yet but um, we will put it in here. Now, each time we're going to be adding a picture, so let's uh, let picture equal null. So it's got no picture at the moment. Um, and then what we can do is uh, we'll say picture. Oh, and you know what? Um, how about we'll, we won't, we'll, let's get a, some, we're, we're getting our e.target, and so we'll just call that pick, so uh, let pick equals e dot target that's the that's the um, the object that is being passed in but if we go dot ID it will get the the file name of that object and we want to basically take thumb off of that so picture is going to be equal to frame dot asset and once we take the thumb off of it then we're going to ask for the frame dot asset of that picture without the word thumb so we got to recreate this a little bit pick dot uh, here we have a substra. So we're trying to now get the string from the beginning. So this starts at the beginning and we want to go until we get to the pick dot length. Minus uh, six is the word thumb, I think, and minus four for dot JPEG, minus four for dot JPEG. So that gets us the beginning, but then we have to concatenate back on the dot JPEG. Um, you, you get what we're doing there? We're, we're finding the word before thumb and then we're concatenating it on JPEG. And that gets us our picture, which we will dot center on the pane, like so. Um, we would then want to show the pane. So pane.show and stage.update. Stage.update, like so. And that should do it. So let's pause that timer and have a look here. So we've saved that up. We refresh here. And we click, and there's the pane with a picture in it. Woohoo! Nice. Now, did we actually remove the picture? Because right now, I suspect what's happening is we're putting our picture on this, but every time we're adding the picture again, but it's just going up on top. So let's start that timer, resume the timer, and just say um, if there is a picture. I <laughs> spell the word picture in time. If there is a picture, picture dot remove from. Okay, and let's pause there, stop that timer. All right, I think that, that does it there. So this is saying uh, when picture is null, there's no picture yet, uh, that won't do anything. But uh, as soon as we've assigned a picture, it's going to take that the old picture uh, this is us loading the pane again. It's going to take the old picture and it's going to remove it from the pane. You got that? So we saved that up. Uh, I don't, you, you, we didn't notice it causing a problem there, but I think it was you know, like when I close this one, the, the picture of the monk is still there, but underneath now, I, could, I suspect anyway. So there we go. Could we make this look a little bit better? Uh, we won't count this under the, the five minutes, but isn't that cool? We just did. And now I wouldn't recommend, like, I mean, you can do this in HTML. If, if this is all you're going to do, you're welcome just to use HTML. But by having this ability to load a bunch of pictures and see them, this is the canvas. So once we load this, you can do anything you want to it. Start applying blend modes to it, animations over it, or, you know, whatever. Uh, whatever it is, um, we've we've just basically popped up a window. Now, 
uh, you may not be able to code this in five minutes in HTML. Uh, I suspect that <laughs> if, you, if you've experienced HTML like I have, you get into CSS and HTML, you're probably in, in for about an hour's worth of fooling around here to get this to show up. But <laughs> I, I, we're not here to knock HTML as <laughs> its uses. All right, so let's make this look a little bit better. Um, and that is just with some backing rectangles. Uh, first of all, we'll make the pane go right the width of the stage. So we'll drop into the Zim Duo technique here, and we can say width colon, and we'll make it go right the width of the stage. But if you do that, you got to get rid of the corner, which is why we went into the Zim Duo technique height colon 650, just so we can get to that corner on the pane easily. There might be some other things in the pane that we want to do too. So corner colon zero, that, that will uh, bump, bump the rectangle of the pane right against the edge. And uh, we can add a close button, close colon true. Usually to, to get rid of the corners, I just make the pane a little bit wider, like 50 pixels wider than the stage. But then if you go put the close button on, uh, the close button goes off the stage or close to it. So if you want the close button to be in the right place, then you need to go uh, keep keep the pane width within the width of the of the stage, sort of obvious. So we got to the corner. Uh, how about we'll give it a background color to background color colon dark. Okay, so we'll save that and let's um, take a look at what that looks like now. Sorry for a little bit of extra five minutes here. Um, well, it's okay. I suppose dark is the same color as the, let's make it, uh, dark is the same color as the background. So when it goes against the edge, it looks a little bit strange. It can make it darker maybe. Um, also what we could do is even uh, make it look a little bit more special if we add a rectangle to that pane. So we new rectangle. This is just a border inside the pane itself. Uh, that might be 650. It was at the height of it. I think it was 650 by 650. So we're making a square that can, uh, maybe we can drop that to dark. Uh, let's see what that looks like. And we'll dot center that on the pane right away. So that's going to be on the pane before the picture shows up there. And uh, let's see what we got there. Sure. You know, what do you think? There's the, the close button on that. That looks uh, looks pretty decent. Now, how about just a quick rectangle around the around the tile? So to do that, um, again, new rectangle. But uh, we've been thinking about it. It might be worth it to make some sort of background on a tile. But then you got to add the margin and stuff like that. And as you can see, we can do this pretty quickly here. Tile dot width. Uh, plus some amount. Let's see if we're doing a spacing of 40 or 30 or 20, sorry, a spacing of 20, that would be 40 on each side. So tile dot height uh, plus 40. And then a color for this one lighter. I think our background currently is light and we would dot center that. But we want to put that either dot bot like that on the bottom, that would be fine. Or we would say stage comma uh, at zero, so or null because the default is stage. But, uh, whatever. Anyway, that's that's fine. Either either one of those would do to place that rectangle at the bottom underneath the tile. Uh, the reason why we put it uh, there like that is then we know the the size of the tile. Otherwise, we'd have to calculate or, or estimate the size of the tile. So we want to make our backing after we make the tile, yet add it underneath the tile. So hey, no big deal. And the last thing, uh, maybe let's put a shadow on that. So we've got a dot center on the stage and dot sha, almost, dot shadow. I think it'll probably look a, a little garish. I don't know what's going on with our default shadow. It seems with big things, if you do it on a big thing, the shadow becomes really uh, too large for my liking there. But um, that's easy enough to fix, kind of RGBA for red, green, uh, zero, comma, zero, comma, zero, comma. And something like a 0 0.2 looks good usually. And then you can make, make that smaller, 10, 10, 10. Mm, I don't know. 
that's the blur. So this is how much in the X, how much in the Y, and the blur after the color of the shadow there. And uh, it's not bad. You, can, you might want to go for a crisp shadow. I've been, I've been kind of liking the, <laughs> that might do it, a crisp shadow. Uh, so that's three just a touch off of a full. Oh, no, I don't actually like that. What do you think? That would be too dark for that. Blah. OK, well, let's uh, bring that up to six and maybe <laughs> maybe we liked it how it was before. Uh, yeah, fine. OK, so uh, there you go. Isn't that? tidy looking and it just took a few it's basically some border rectangle kind of maneuvers there uh, to make that work okay ladies and gentlemen um, this has been a code in five minutes uh, with Zim I am Dr. Abstract and if you want to um, come and hang with us at Zim that would be great zimjs.com slash slack uh, of course, visit ZimZimJazz.com and you do some code in five minutes. Ciao!